excited about today's video because this marks the beginning of a series of videos I will be making called Rye Breads of Europe. Stick to the very end where I will share with you more about this series. In today's video, I will be making Frisian rye bread or Fries Rolgebrut. This is a bread made up almost entirely of cracked rye berries that are steamed at a low temperature for 12 hours. And interestingly, this bread contains no yeast and no sourdough. Join me today as I share with you the recipe and history of breads like this. Let's get started. For this recipe, you're going to need cracked rye berries. I can't find cracked where I live, so I have to grind my own. And I don't have a grain mill, but I do have a nut and spice grinder that works pretty well for this. I've used a food processor in the past, but it's not super great at, at doing this sort of thing. You could use a high powered blender, but only pulse a few times so it doesn't turn into flour. This is the consistency you're looking for. You're going to need 700 grams or about four cups of these cracked rye berries. So the night before you bake, you're going to boil 700 grams or three cups of water and add 700 grams or four cups of cracked rye berries to the pot after you turn off the heat. Stir to make sure all the rye berries are wet and submerged in the water. Then put a lid on the pot and wrap the whole pot in two bath towels to insulate it overnight. Let it sit like this for about 12 hours. This is what the mash should look like the next day. It's kind of like a breakfast porridge. Now scoop out the soaked rye into a large bowl and break up any large clumps with your fingers. Next add 200 grams or one and a half cups of whole wheat flour and 13 grams of salt or two and a quarter teaspoons. You could use whole rye flour if you want to skip the wheat but this recipe is pretty authentic. I found it on an old Dutch bread baking chat room, and this is actually a scaled down version from an actual bakery recipe. Now add some water if you find that your rye berries and flour are not sticking together. Start with 100 grams or half a cup of water and add more as needed just until you can squeeze the dough together and it keeps its shape. The interesting thing is, is that the first time I tested this recipe, I didn't need to add any water, but this time I added 200 grams or one cup. Every batch of grain or flour absorbs water differently depending on how it's grown or how it's stored. My first batch of rye berries were stored in an airtight container, and my second were stored in a bag. So they must have absorbed more humidity from the air, and that's why I needed to add water to this batch. Once your dough can clump together, use your pan to form your bread into a loaf. Make sure to pack down your dough well so there are no air pockets in the bread. This is very unlike a delicate yeasted bread that requires careful shaping. This one requires no rising time and is more like a steamed pudding than bread as we know it. Once you have shaped your bread, tip it out of the pan and sprinkle wheat bran onto your work surface. Press each side of the bread into the bran, applying a little pressure as needed to get all the indentations in the dough. Then put the dough back in the pan, gently reshaping as necessary. This bread comes from Friesland in the Netherlands. The Dutch have a very rich bread baking tradition, ranging from wheat loaves to dark rye and even breads filled with sugar and spices. The wheat breads and those with additions like sugar and spices were the luxury options, while the rye were for the less well off. This particular bread was made by using the residual heat of the baking ovens at the end of the day to be left to bake overnight while the baker went home. Many Dutch pair this bread with a pea soup called snert. Now wrap your loaf pan well in foil in both directions making sure to seal up any openings so the steam stays in during baking. Now bake for 12 hours in a 110 degree Celsius or 230 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven with a pan of water at the bottom of the oven to create steam. Periodically check the water and top it off as needed. After 12 hours, let the bread sit covered for 24 hours before unwrapping. 
and then let it sit for another 24 hours before slicing. My bread was a bit moist on the outside, so I let it dry on the counter uncovered for those last 24 hours. Then slice thinly and enjoy with pea soup or meats and cheeses. I hope you enjoyed seeing such a traditional rye bread being made, and don't be intimidated to try this. It really is a simple recipe. It's mostly a matter of time and patience. Now about this Rye Breads of Europe series. I intend to add to this series of videos once a month where I will be exploring the different regions of Europe and their traditions of rye breads. Everything from the lighter rise of Spain and France to the really dark rise of Eastern Europe, all the different varieties from the Germanic countries, and also, of course, the rye breads from the Nordic countries. Is there a particular European rye bread that you've always wanted to see made? Comment below and let me know what it is, and I'll add it to my list of things to make. And while you're waiting for the next video, check out my German rye bread recipe, and I'll see you next time.